Hello and welcome to the Tata Steel Chess Tournament here in Kolkata, India where we are about to kick off the fast and furious format of chess. It's time for Blitz. I'm Tanya Sachdev in the studio with Lawrence Trent. Hi Tanya. Hey. Are you excited? I'm so excited and what a rapid event we had Lawrence seeing uh, Hikaru. It was by the end of it, it was a total Hikaru Nakamura show. It was. Hikaru ran the show, won the rapid, uh, effortlessly actually. He converted his chances. Nobody really looked close to taking him. But now we are moving on to Blitz. That is right. Blitz chess, guys. Five minutes plus three seconds increment per move. We have got 18 rounds. We will not have a second to catch our breath. And neither will you. Uh, we're delighted that you could join us today. Of course, same as always. You can get in touch via the uh, Twitch chat, twitch.tv forward slash chess. We want to hear from you. It's going to be a blunder fest. It's going to be drama. It's going to be absolute madness, Tanya. But who have you got taking home the title today? Uh, well, tomorrow, actually, tomorrow, because tomorrow, this is right. going to be, in fact, a double round robin, which exactly. means that players are going to play against each other with the white pieces and the black pieces. Nine rounds today, nine games tomorrow, and we've got a new player with us. So, very warm welcome to Ramesh Babu Pragnananda, who will be replacing Nihal Sarin in the Blitz portion of the Tata Steel Chess Tournament here at the Satyaji 3 Auditorium. Uh, the players have taken their their places and we're about to start really soon now this is the man this has been a Hikaru Nakamura show all through the rapid but I have to say the first day was not that easy for him but once he got on that winning streak there is no stopping this guy he is the legend of fast play format in fact he's the legend of bullets so maybe five minutes might be too much for him Lawrence <laughs> Well, he's, um, he's also well known to be a, a brilliant uh, blitz player, not just bullet. Um, he, I'm pretty sure, has got the highest ever rating on chess.com for blitz. Uh, he is currently number two in the world, I believe, at, uh, on the uh, FIDE rankings for blitz. Sorry, he's number three at the moment. Uh, he was over 2,900 at the moment. Magnus Carlsen, 2,939. Vashir Lagrav, 2,937. And Hikaru touching 2,900 in Blitz. So he is at 2,893, which means that this could be the moment, this could be the tournament that he actually crosses the 2,900 For sure. mark. Now this guy is definitely, if you guys are betting on someone, he is a safe bet because this uh, this player can be a real beast on the board, but and once Lawrence he gets on that winning streak, there really is no stopping him. So will will it in fact be Surya Shekhar Ganguly who crawled back from the bottom at yeah. the very end of the rapid event by one of the nicest victories in the in the entire tournament that we saw against Vishian and will he repeat that and stop Hikaru Nakamura very early on? Who's your pick for the blitz? Um, it's a good one. I, I, I'm not really. I mean, Hikaru looks the most composed. He would obviously be a safe bet, as you said. But you've got to remember that Levon Aronian is here, rated 28.54, absolutely brilliant blitz player. We've got Sergey Koyakin, yes, the former world blitz champion in 2016. He would be a great bet. You've got Mamajarov, an incredibly strong blitz player. Levon Aronian. Levon, as I said. Uh, you know, Vichy Anand uh, can't roll out the Tiger of Madras. You know, there are so many players. Wesley as well. I mean, there are so many players that can win this. I guess Pragananda, you would have to be very optimistic to bet on the youngster, one of the youngest grandmasters of all time. But this is going to be a great experience for him. And having spoken to him, Tanya, before the round, he was just so excited, so thrilled to be here. He knows there's no pressure on him. He just wants to play some good chess, maybe cause a few upsets on the way. He's got no expectations about winning the tournament, but he would love to ruin the tournament of some of the other players. That's, so. what, we're, that's what we're looking forward to as well. Like you said, Lawrence, Blitz is all about precision, speed, and often it's a blunder fest. Just like we like it and just like you like it. Yeah. And it, there we have Prague against Hare Krishna. Yes, young Pragnanda, there you can see him, uh, such a nice kid as well. Uh, 13 just years old. 13 years old, he is a phenomenal talent, grandmaster already, and uh, he's going to be a, a long-term fixture in uh, Indian chess and, and elite chess, I'm sure he's going to get there as well. Here's Wesley Sergens for Xi'an, they've played each other many times before. Um, 
we'll see how that one goes. And Hikaru, just thinking about what is he going to do against Ganguly today? Uh, many, many options. Is he going to go with his knight f3 and e3 and b3 stuff? Is he, he enjoys playing he enjoys like it. that yeah. when, um, when we go short on the time. Yeah. So the games are going to kick off any moment. Remember also, guys, that... Um, oh, ah, well, the games have kicked off. No time for small talk. And knight f3 has been played d5 and e3. So he's going with his, uh, his normal repertoire and c4. So he's been playing this a lot, played this a lot in the rapid with b3. A very, very solid, very, very decent repertoire. And the games will be on our screen very shortly. You can see in the bottom left uh, the precise games. Actually, Suya played this, didn't he, already once. And um, we could potentially... Also, what we're going to do is we're going to stay on this game. Yes. And if it if it tends to fizzle out or if there's something drastic that happens on the other board, Lawrence, then we'll quickly jump to it because there really is no time at all. We would like to because we've had we've had some very interesting matchups and we'd like to go to all of them, but that's going to be a bit tough. Exactly. So, all right. So we're going to stay here for the moment. Obviously. We've got a very similar position actually uh, in the Hikaru game. I believe he had something similar uh, earlier on in the Rapid tournament. The position looks very familiar indeed. Looks like a very solid position for Hikaru. Perhaps we can go to another game. And what's quite funny is Levon Aronian, who is playing against Vidit, is playing a line that uh, Levon actually suffered a defeat in just oh. Oh, a couple of weeks ago, playing black on the black side of this variation against Gawain Jones. And we have a position here where, uh, if we put the position on the board very quickly, uh, something along these lines, c6 and bishop d3. This is exactly the game Jones versus uh, Aronian from Isle of Man, and here Vidit plays the very uh, well-known move, knight d2, uh, which is a funky-looking move, uncovering here, the bishop here, attacking the queen, you have to take the knight, the bishop takes, rook e1, the bishop comes back to g6, and now the main move for white is to go knight a4 to try and uh, pressurize down here and here. This has been analyzed a bit, but black is doing absolutely fine, so not really a huge... Uh, you know, huge problems for black there. We'll see how that one works out. I'm trying to see here, Tanya, which games are the most interesting. Harry Krishna gets Braganunda. We should go there. Let's see how the young phenom is doing. We've got this position on the board, a two knights Karakhan. And, well, I, I love White's position here. I don't know about you. It is really, uh, Black hasn't finished his development yeah. yet and it's not very easy to see how, I mean the knight can't really come to f6 because the g7 pawn hangs. Um, is he going to go, so he's just taken on d5. Yeah, it's White's move. And White has played queen g4, that is a very Harry Krishna-esque move. Hitting that I bishop. You have to retreat to f6 probably. He's gone queen f6. Queen f6, yep. Yeah. I like queen f6. Because you also make way for a long castle. Exactly. And sometimes you can hit the queen with knight h6 as well to get fully developed. So looks as though Pragnanda's doing just about okay. Maybe white is slightly better because the two bishops are strong here. Is white going to go d3 here? Uh, white could go d3. That looks very natural. Yeah, there's just a lot of He's trying to get the bishop to yeah, g5. Exactly. He's gone d3. Keep it simple. And now you can't really go long castle because of this threat, so you have exactly. to be careful. And if knight h6, white could consider bishop uh, trading off this knight and spoiling black spawn structure. Correct. And both players keeping it even on the, ta on the clock, and that is so important for blitz to not fall back behind on the clock because um, no matter what the position is, if you don't have enough time, you're, you are definitely going to mess it up. Absolutely. All right, let's go back to uh, to our main board, Nakamura versus Surya. Yep. Let's go there. So we have the hanging pawn structure on the board. And um, yeah, these are really tricky positions to play. 
Yeah, I think that Hikari is being extremely clever again in his choice of, well, opening and the style of the position, the style of the game. Uh, he's the one playing against these hanging pawns. It's a lot more difficult to to play with these hanging pawns because white can always attack them and you have to be precise when you defend them. That being said... Uh, what black really wants in this structure is a successful d4 break, but he has to time it really, really well because otherwise he could just end up with a weakness. Yeah, he has to, he has to try and get d4, but it looks as though Ganguly is doing just fine here. It looks as though he's... He's got a perfectly reasonable position. I don't see a way for Hikaru to to really put the pressure on at the moment. So we'll see. So he's gone bishop a3. And bishop a3. We had a move and from he Syria. Played, uh, he played rook c8, defending the c5 c8, pawn. And Hikaru insists with pressure. Yep. The point is that if right now well black can't anyway go c4 but anytime the black even does manage to get c4 the d4 square gets really weak so often white is provoking black uh, putting pressure on these hanging pawns to make to, to make them move forward so that there are some weak squares 92 94 on the board yep Yeah, and uh, Hikaru thinking if he if he wants to go knight f4, allowing the trade of bishop f4, he's gone back knight c3. Interesting. Correct. Yeah, this is all about hopping around and not committing. Hopping around, but if black goes knight f6, do you really think he wants to repeat with knight e2? No, but I mean sometimes you've got to hop around and not commit um, in in such positions because as soon as you as soon as you play a move like knight f4. If it's the wrong decision, you know you don't want to rush. You don't want to rush into things and commit. Basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, you've 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 got to time it well. And doing knight f4 now, I think, would be a huge a huge mistake. So I like what Hikaru is doing. I like the fact that he's he's just finding his feet. You know, so I like it. Let's go to another game, Tanya. Uh, All this right. isn't. Uh, it's really heating up in So versus Anand. Let's go there. Wesley Sergens, Vishwanathan, Anand. Let's get it up to date. And we, we are have, up to date. Yeah, we have this position on the board. And what's going on here? Uh, wow. Rook takes a1, rook. And rook c8. Okay. They are. Well, we've got so the wrong position on the bottom left, guys. Just bear in mind that is the Hikaru game. We are looking at So versus Anand. So, so black has an extra up. pawn, but what are these pawns worth? Probably not much. I mean, white definitely has enough compensation for the pawn. I actually like white's position. I here. love white's position. Um, you know, black does not have any. Black does not have his light squared bishop to challenge white's bishop. If this d5 pawn falls, the position is just going to be over, and it's going to be a bit of a task for him to defend it. Uh, let's run. Let's go back to how Surya reacted to Hikaru's. Um, well, at least a repetition once. And so we decided to, in fact, not go with knight f6. Wow, we've had a huge change in the, in the structure. Hikaru has won a pawn here, but at what cost? Hikaru is pinned. But knight takes e4. Brilliant move, exposing the fact that the knight on d7 is hanging at the, at the end. Was that this just is excellent. a blunder? It, this is excellent. I think this is just over. I think it's two pawns to the good. Knight takes e4. If you take on e4 with the bishop, I take back. If you take everything off, then your knight... Uh, maybe you want to do it the other way because knight takes... No, no, because knight takes c5 here, Tanya. Might be a problem. Uh, take, with the, take with the bishop because then you've got bishop takes h7 and bishop f5. Yeah, you can exchange queens even first if you, if you want, but this is also fine. This looks like two pawns to me. This looks like two pawns. Absolutely brilliant. And I don't see any compensation. No. What Did he just blunder with knight e4? Well, he, maybe he missed it at, at some point around here. And this is what I was saying. This is where Hikaru is such a master. He, he just manages to... His timing has been on point this tournament. And that's, uh, that's always going to bring you good results. So I don't think this game is He's not gonna particularly interesting. Here. He's massively up on the clock. And we do have a result. We do. 
and Mamajara versus Koyakin is a draw. Nothing really happened in that game between two very good friends. I think we should go back to the So versus Anand yes. game. I think that's the most exciting of all the games. Pragnanda's holding his own at the moment. So from where we left it Ooh. last, instead of the knight on e6, black has got his king on e6 in f to do exactly what we were talking about, defend the d5 pawn. And he's offered this exchange. Now you don't want to take this because right. black will be doing more than fine once he's able to get that. And we have a result here as well. What happened there? I think what? Was it, was it a, a draw? draw. Yeah. Wow, okay. And the players look very happy with it. Wesley couldn't find a way through. It seems as though Vichy had... I like rook c4 a lot. You yeah. don't have the bishop to challenge white's light squared bishop, so you challenge it with the rook blocking all its play. And um, the players decided that they didn't want to go on or try for anything more. And it's hard to break for white now in this position. A very nice uh, king on e6 holding fort. Let's go to Levon with it. Wow, okay. Levon now pushing through with e6. This is a typical idea in these structures, use, using that e pawn to try and bust open the king, or sometimes advancing it one square further to e7. Um, and this position is, I would take wide here all day in a blitz setting. Um, you see that pawn on e6, and you see that it's it's going to get dangerous. We, I think we all would take white here. Yeah, and bishop e4, this is the move I thought that it would play. And actually, this move is quite oh. annoying for white. Yeah, White's king Maybe. is also exposed here. Perhaps taking White is not such a great idea. Yeah. Uh, well, he's going to take on f7. Okay. Right. King f7. King takes f7. Does 95 he or? 95 and f3? Is that what he's going to do? It looks very shaky to play like this because then queen h4 comes and all kinds of stuff can happen. So I don't, I don't know what Levon has planned here. Is he in a bit of trouble? Maybe he wants to go 90, 95, 95 on the board. Okay. I think it's going to be f3 next because there's no... So you... Okay, what's he thinking about? You've got to go back to you've g8. You've got to go here. back to g8. Yeah. He's gone g8 and f3. And f3 has on been played. On the board. And now the question is, does queen h4 work here? I would be playing queen h4 here. It's such a blitz move. Well, it might just work tactically. f takes e4, rook g3 check. You can't put the king on f2. He's gone queen f6. Yeah, but this looked like a winning winning move to me, queen h4. Unless I'm losing my mind. Let's go back yeah. here, Tanya. Queen h4, was that... What, what was going on here? Uh, Maybe just queen g2, you know? Just what? keeping it simple. In this position, yeah. queen g2. But then rook c2. Looks devastating. Yeah, this looks bad. Interesting. We'll have to ask Vidit after the game. He played queen f6. Queen came to h2 now. But this looks horrible for white. It's all gone pear-shaped. He takes on f3, rook f1, rook e3. Black is in complete control, control here. Complete control. This looks over for white. Maybe not over, but really bad. And what's happened? There's been a mass number of exchanges. We'll get that on the board in a second. The bishops come back to e4. You can see the position in the bottom left there. And... Black is simply a pawn up. Pawn up with a better position. Queen e7. Queen f4. I guess he'll play h6. Get some Three. breathing room yeah, for the king. Yeah, eight six on the board. Yeah. And I don't see how Levon. Rook f2. I don't get that move. He just wants to stop rook c2, I guess. He's not worried about the check down here because it's that covered. That bishop on e4 is such a monster. Beautiful this bishop. Looks rook e8. Knight c6. Queen d7. Queen d7, okay. Knight d4. Knight d4, and now, now he's stabilized. Bishop g6 on the board. Yes, I like it. Allowing rook the rook. e4 is a threat. Yeah, allowing the rook to come in. I like it. I like how he's doing it. Vid it. And Levon in big trouble in the first game. Knight f3. And we also do have a result on the Hikaru Surya board. Hikaru is Queen e6. Yeah. Really in form here. I mean, yep. he's just he just crushed through black. Precisely. And Levon in huge, huge trouble. trouble. Yeah, huge trouble. Queen throwing the queen into the mix with Queen c7. A bit of a desperado in my opinion. Queen now came to e3, pinning. I like it. There are no checks. So now Queen c6. Okay. 
Bishop comes to f7, nice and safe. Everything's protected. 16 seconds for Vidit, 10 to Levon. Here we go. King f1, played very, very quickly. d4, surely. He played queen c5, trying to get the queens off. Also very logical. Queen d7. Queen d7, all right. Rook e7. And what have we got here? We're, they're blitzing a tremendous place. Queen f5. And now finally d4, allowing this bishop to come in. Rook d2. And what's he going to do? They're playing just on increment, guys. My goodness. Absolute carnage. Check. King f2. The pieces have come off. The queens have come off. Levon hanging on. Rook e2 check. Looks devastating there. Bottom left of your corner, guys. And he's... What about rook e2? Surely. Rook a7. Also good. Look at this. Absolute carnage. This is the position he took. He ah, took he managed to take the pawn off. This, this, this was is a terrible... Not be, this is not going to be so no. simple now. Well, this is probably he, not he even might winning survive. now. Yeah, he should survive now. Oh my goodness. Vidit has just given away a huge chunk of his advantage. And now we have a rook And now the c4 pawn falls? Yeah, now this is just a draw. This is just a draw. Well, you've got to be careful. No, the rook just moves away and you lose the... Yes, rook but c4. your king's on the wrong side rook of the board. Rook c4. Rook b8. Yeah, rook b8. Hold on a second. Is this so simple? King is now cut. King g5. Harry Krishna has beaten Pragnanda, rook by six. the way. Rook b6. Rook b6 on the board. He, you're not going to be allowed in... No, this is very tricky. This is very, very tricky. Rook g8, the king's coming to h4. Rook defends the pawn on h3, and now the king will come to c to c2. Okay, but now my king is so beautiful here. I but I think this is fine for, for white, no. because I'm threatening king c2 next and coming in. And now he can attack the pawns as I well. I can go rook f8, rook f2, rook, rook h2. And the rook attacks the pawns. This should be a draw, because you just don't have enough to... Rook comes back. Hold king c2 is threatened, I'm h5. Not sure. I'm not sure. Takes and king takes, c2. Takes. Rook g3 is coming. Is this so clear? King c2, come on, yes. On the board, rook g3. Rook g2, check. You have to go. King d1, and the king yeah. just comes. Is it so It's too easy? close. The king is too close. I think, can he just... He, take, take, take. King no, he can't take. No, he, he can't... Uh, yeah, he can take. Just take, can take on take. g3 and king e1, and it's a draw. King g2, king e2, h4. Yes, king e2. And it's a draw. Yep. And you're just in time. Yep. What a save by Levon Aronian. He was really in trouble yep. with it, shaking his head because he knows he's let go of a huge opportunity there. Completely winning position, but that's what's blitz. Yeah, a very, very disappointing result there for Vidit. I mean, he was completely winning. As you said, Tanya, that's blitz. There are so many ways you can you mess, can up. mess up. Yeah, and... Uh, Unfortunately for Vidit, that is a missed opportunity. Black against Levon. Massive opportunity right there with the black pieces. Uh, with one of the best players in the world. Vidit is not going to be happy with that result. No. And that means after the first round, we have got two decisive results. Nakamura beating Ganguly and Harry What Krishna. a game that was. Just complete... It was all an entire just Nakamura all the way. Yeah, so you really didn't have a chance in that game. Hari also winning a nice game against Pragnananda. Shark drew with Karyakin, not much happened there. Yep. Wesley Vishy, a very interesting game, but again, with that rook on c4 blocking out all play. Brilliant defense by Vishy. And Levon with it. That was a heartbreak for with it. Yeah, I mean, you don't often get a chance like that, especially, you know, in these tournaments. You've got if you get a black uh, winning advantage with black against somebody like Levon, you really have to take it if you want to win the tournament. So here are the results, as we just said. Good wins for Harry Krishna and Nakamura. The boy Pragnananda shouldn't be too disheartened. He's got plenty of games left. And Hikaru continuing in his winning ways. So here are the standings. Nakamura and Harry Krishna on one point. A bunch of people on half who all drew and Ganguly and Pragnananda yet to get off to a winning start. Round two will be starting shortly, yes. very, very shortly. So you guys have got probably just about enough time to get a cup of tea, tops, maybe some biscuits, maybe some, what else? Oh, that's that, about that's it, that's and about just come it. back. Um, we will take a very, very small break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere.